Hello, welcome to our Firebird Database Administrator Training, covering the topics presented at IB Experts Firebird School, held by Holger Klemt and Jason Chapman, as part of the International Firebird Conference 2007. We'll continue in this tutorial session by taking a brief look at the Firebird log file and temp files. Understanding the log file. Take the time to look at your logs and search for patterns emerging over a period of time, as the source of many problems often go back quite a long way. For example, page corruptions are not always immediately noticeable. There are a few typical unimportant entries, such as error number 10061. These are basically protocols at TCP IP level. For example, 10061 means actively refused, 10054 means the user has disconnected, or the Guardian restarting. If you use the Guardian, the log notes every time it's started. And of course, a routine shutdown. You'll see this a lot with laptop applications and isn't really important. It's also worth looking at the logs on the client side. There are, however, a few important entries which you should take note of should they appear in your log. Terminated up normally, an indication that someone has shut down your Firebird server by pulling the plug. Modifying Procedure X, which is currently in use by active user requests. This occurs fairly often with Firebird 2. It's not critical if you modify a procedure whilst others are using it. The problem arises due to the multi-generational architecture. When others are working with the procedure, you can only see the results of the old procedure. Page X is an orphan. This is often not such a problem because it can be an index or a data page where it no longer has active references to it. If this message starts to occur regularly, perform a backup and restore. Page X, wrong type. Unfortunately, this one's pretty terminal because it's a clear indication that your database is corrupt. It's important to determine which pages are affected because they may not be in use anymore or only store old record versions. In this case, the problem will be solved by the next database sweep. On the other hand, if you are unlucky, the next database sweep will turn it into a real problem. Temporary files. Firebird temp files are created when something needs to be sorted or combined from multiple tables and no index is usable or there is not enough sort memory available. When the Firebird server receives a query, including order by or similar, without an index, then Firebird has to sort the data somewhere. Firebird has a so-called sort buffer, which is principally a memory area where such sorting processes can be performed. If, however, you have a sorting operation that is 10 gigabytes, Firebird needs somewhere to do this. From a certain size, when the sort buffer is no longer sufficient, it moves the job out into a temporary file or files, and you can specify here where these temp files should be. Because of the intense batting backwards and forwards, you need to know where your temp file is in relation to your database. As soon as you need a temp file, it's because you don't have enough RAM or you've exceeded your internal limits. By its very nature, it's going to be reading things from the database cache and wanting to put things in the temp directory. The default value is determined using Fiber temp, temp or TMP environment options. Every directory item may have an optional size argument to limit its storage. This argument follows the directory name and must be separated by at least one space character. If the size argument is omitted or invalid, then all available space in this directory will be used. Examples temp directories equals c temp semicolon d temp or temp directories equals c temp 100 million semicolon d temp 500 million semicolon e temp. Temp files can get extremely big very quickly. In fact, they can get much larger than the current database size. It's worth observing them to see just how they grow when you have certain large batch processes running. For example, when you have a huge join on your nominal ledger. It's even possible to ascertain from the sort files roughly how far you are in the process once you've gained a little experience monitoring them. One of the reasons for this is that temp files also include the full space definition for long char or varchar columns. So be careful when defining your character fields. 
Many developers are very generous when defining chars and varchars because they know that Firebird stores them in binary form, the string content plus the number of empty spaces, and not the empty spaces themselves. However, when these fields are loaded into the temp directory, they are written out in full. For this reason, it often makes more sense to define a text blob rather than a huge varchar. Blob fields are only limited in size by the page size. For example, with a database page size of 8 kilobyte, the maximum blob size is 32 gigabytes. It can also sometimes be advantageous to compress the temp files. Firebird temp files begin with FB and, by default, they are stored in the Windows temp directory when the Firebird server is installed as a service. The Firebird temp directory or directories can be altered and specified in the Firebird configuration file by defining the parameter temp directories. Firebird then uses those directories specified here and, only when there is insufficient space, goes on to use the Windows directories. But what do you do if your database crashes mid-sort file? The temp files just sit there. So if your system hangs and you need to reboot, you could suddenly have a lot of temp files. While they're being used, they have a handle on them. So if you are allowed to delete or rename them, then it's fine because they're orphans. So that was our introduction to the Firebird log file and temp files. A transcript of this tutorial can be downloaded by all IB Expert registered full version holders from the customer download area at www.ibexpert.com. All topics presented here are also documented in detail on our website. We hope this tutorial has been of help to you and look forward to publishing our next topic in our series for DB admins. Goodbye for now and thank you from all of us at IB Expert.